Hello and welcome once again to this channel called Covered in Child and I trust that you've been blessed by the previous videos and that you will enjoy this one as well and as I said previously please feel free to like, to share, to comment, to share on your others on your social media platforms as well so that other people can also enjoy um, the word. I want to speak today about enjoying your birthright. I believe that many Christians are not even aware of what their birthright is and therefore, especially in the times that we are facing, they are not able to withstand even the temptations that are coming and to enjoy the birthright that God has given us. I want to start reading by out of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 12 to verse 17, and then also verse 22 to verse 24. From verse 14 says, Make every effort to live in peace with all men and be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. See that no one is sexually immoral or is godless like Esau, who for a single meal sold his inheritance rights as the oldest son. Afterward, as you know, when he wanted to inherit his blessing, he was rejected. He could bring about no change of mind, though he sought the blessing with tears. And then verse 22, But you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all men, to the spirits of righteous men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of of Abel. The writer to the Hebrews talks about encouraging us to live a holy life and then he makes an example about Esau and he says to us, he warns us not to be like Esau who we regards as godless and who sold his birthright and his inheritance for a meal. And we all know the story if you go into Genesis 25 verse 26 to 34 Many of us know the story about Esau who sold his birthright, who was hungry and who, for a meal, for a plate of food, sold his inheritance rights and gave up his birthright for a plate of food. A plate of food is something which is temporary. I know for myself, I can eat a plate of food and probably in two hours' time or three hours' time, I'm hungry again. And that is what Esau gave up his birthright. The birthright was something special. It was his inheritance that he was going to get from his father. And he lost his birthright for something, something so temporal. And today we have Christians as well who are giving up their birthright for things that are temporal. For power, for money, for worldly gain. Even for sexual pleasure, they are losing the birthright that God has given them. What is this birthright? Esau, even though him and Jacob were twins, he was regarded as the older and the firstborn. And if we read in Deuteronomy 21, verse 15 to verse 17, we will discover that the right of the firstborn was to receive a double portion. So whatever their father Isaac had left for them, Esau would have got double than what Jacob got because he was the firstborn. But because he despised his inheritance, because he rather thought that food was more important than this birthright, he missed out. And Jacob instead got the double portion. Jacob instead was regarded as the older brother. Jacob got the blessing that should have been Esau's. When we read in the Bible, we will see that Jacob, eventually out of Jacob's line came the Messiah, Jesus. This is one of the blessings which Esau missed out on. We will even read later on in the book of Obadiah that Esau's descendants who became known as Edom, they were cursed. Their land was cursed. 
And that is because he sold his birthright. I want to encourage you that we have a wonderful inheritance in God. The Bible teaches us that we have become the seed of Abram. And we have a wonderful inheritance as the children of God. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 to verse 7 speaks about the fact that we have the full rights as sons. This is our identity, that we have the full rights as children of the living God. And when we despise this and we go over the, after the things of the world, we lose our inheritance. We lose the wonderful things that God has for us. We all know the story of the prodigal son in the Gospels. And we know that many times we focus on the, on the first, on the, on the last born son, the son that was disobedient, that went and sought out the pleasures of the world. But when we look at the older son, the older son as well was entitled to an inheritance. He was the firstborn. He was entitled to a double portion. Yet when he came home and he discovered that his father had given a party for the younger brother, he was angry. And he said, why have you given my brother something? And I have never even enjoyed a party with the livestock that is here. And his father actually turns around to him and says to him, but my son, everything that I have is yours. You see, that older, that firstborn son did not realize the wonderful blessing that he had as the firstborn. That he could have accessed anything from his father's home. He could have accessed anything and enjoyed a party with his friends. But because he says in his speech, even I have served you like a slave, he rather lived as a slave and not as the firstborn son. He missed out on his birthright. So I want to encourage you to enjoy your birthright, to enjoy the blessings that God has given you as the firstborn. Because you see, in, 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 in Hebrews that we just read, he talks about us being the firstborn, the church of the firstborn. So we are the firstborn. When we come through Jesus, Jesus was the first of many brethren. And when we come into Christ, we also become the firstborn. So the blessings of the firstborn, that double portion, becomes us. We can access the blessings which God has the multiple blessings which God has for us. And let us not sell ourselves short. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, he says, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Esau fixed his eyes on what he could see, the plate of food. He said, I want this plate of food now. He did not look ahead and fix his eyes on what was not seen. The eternal inheritance that his father had for him. And so many believers even today are looking at the things which are seen. When we look at our world today, we can look at the economy that has crashed around the world. We can look at the things which are seen. The fact maybe that our bank balance has gone down. We can look at the things which are seen and become discouraged. But Paul encourages us here not to look at the things which are seen, but to lift up our eyes, to lift up our eyes and to see the things which are not seen. The blessings that God has promised us. The gifts of the Holy Spirit that is available to us. The anointing that is available to us as God's children. The love, the peace, the joy. The presence of God with us every day. That is the things which are not seen. Our inheritance which is precious. So I want to encourage you to lift up your eyes and to enjoy your birthright, to live a holy life 
as Hebrews encouraged us. To live a life that is set apart for God in reverence and in awe. To set our eyes on the treasures that God has for us. That people can't see. That money can't buy. Take God at his word and believe him and hold on and enjoy your birthright. Enjoy your inheritance as the firstborn. That is what God has for each one of us as believers. Be blessed, hold on, and keep looking to the things which are not seen, the things which are above and not the things which are below. God bless you. Once again, feel free to subscribe to the channel and to share this video with others as well. God bless you.